I'm not ashamed. What did the crowds yell when Jesus entered Jerusalem? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Mark on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Mark chapter 11. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 11. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Mark chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So when they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing, loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went to Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is one of those rare stories where all four Gospels record the event, which should show us the significance of this event. Only two of the Gospels recorded the birth of Jesus, an important event for sure, but obviously not as important as other stories. Not every Gospel records the parables of Jesus, with John's Gospel recording none of them. That doesn't mean the parables are unimportant, for they are extremely important in understanding the concepts about the kingdom. It best illustrates John's point, though, in John 21, 25, which says that if everything Jesus did was written down, no book can contain it, for there is too much to cover. But that for all Gospels to record this event should mean that we should pay close attention as to what happens. At the end of chapter 10, we had Jesus traveling from Jericho towards Jerusalem. As we alluded to then, there was a specific road that one would use to make that journey, a distance of 22 kilometers or 14 miles. Simply from reading the text, one could easily assume that this journey was relatively flat, but knowledge of the geography paints a different picture. Jerusalem is about 1,000 meters or 3,300 feet higher in elevation from Jericho. That means that this journey is quite a climb, even for the person in the fittest of shape. We don't read this in Mark, but from John 12, we find that Jesus spent the Sabbath day in Bethany on the road to Jerusalem. That means that the events that take place here are on Sunday, the first day of the week. Thus, it is now one full week before Jesus' resurrection. Drawing now towards Jerusalem, they come to Bethphage, which is a village at the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives overlooks Jerusalem, and it is here that Jesus tells two of his disciples to go into the neighboring village, and they would find a colt tied on which nobody has sat. Matthew also mentions that there was also a donkey that they were to bring as well, a fact that Mark omits. The disciples were to loose the colt and bring it to Jesus. How did Jesus know the colt would be there? Jesus is God. He knows where you and I are at every point in our lives, so it is nothing to know where this colt was. Was Jesus asking the disciples to steal the animal? No, for Jesus said the disciples were to tell those who asked that the Lord has need of it, and the owners would agree to send it. This is what the disciples did. Although Mark doesn't directly tell us this, what was being done here was done to fulfill prophecy, specifically Zechariah 9, verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now to us, riding into town on a donkey or a colt would not be prestigious. We would think of riding in on a large horse. However, to the Jews, a donkey was a royal animal. In 1 Kings 1.38, we read of Solomon, So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehida, the, of the Cherethites and the Pelethites, went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and took him to Gion. In that chapter, we have Solomon being pronounced king of Israel, and here he is riding on a mule. So even though we see these animals as beasts of burden, they are a royal animal fit for a king to ride on. When the colt arrived, they laid their clothes on it as a sign of respect, and Jesus sat on it. It was Passover time, and so there were floods of people going to Jerusalem for the feast. 
Jesus also had been followed from Jericho by great multitudes, as we saw at the end of chapter 10. So there were crowds of people who came with Jesus into Jerusalem. The ones who came before spread their clothes on the ground, and others cut down branches of the trees and spread them on the road. This was the type of treatment that royalty and dignitaries received when they entered a city. The multitude shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is a shout of prayerful joy, calling on the Lord to look favorably upon them and save them. Once Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he came to the temple and looked around at all things. But as it was late in the day, Jesus and the disciples returned to Bethany, but will return to Jerusalem on the next day. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 24, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.